wanted to take a moment to say anytime you start working with power tools, remember safety first. Eye protection, ear protection, and breathing protection when necessary are vital to keeping you safe. Join me as I start learning how to work with wood. I'm not an expert, I'm just a guy trying to share what I'm learning as I'm going through this project. I welcome your feedback and comments below of things I've done wrong or things I can do better. Uh, I really look forward to getting feedback on this video and I hope you enjoy the little bit of change of pace. Project. Our final step is to apply our Minwax water-based polycrylic protective finish to give this the nice clear coat protection that it needs. I've chosen to work with the foam applicator this time instead of the brush, which I do have, mainly because I know what to expect with these. I've worked with these before, they're easy to clean up, and I, I know what the results are gonna be like. So we're gonna stick with this. From this point forward, we are done with power tools. Uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna end up applying at least three coats, probably only three coats to these. And between each coat, we're gonna sand using 220 grit sandpaper attached to a sanding block. I got this one at Rockler. Uh, I think you can get these at Home Depot pretty much anywhere. You basically just open it up. There's some metal spikes in there. You put your sanding paper on. The clear coat will basically fill in the valleys and we'll be sanding the peaks down to meet those valleys and slowly building up a coat. These still feel relatively smooth. Uh, there are a few rough spots but not worth hitting with the uh, sand, sanding at this time since I'm gonna end up sanding the finish down. So as per usual with water-based products, we are going to stir. Just stir it, kind of scraping the bottom. That milky white is the right color for this stuff. It does dry clear though. To do this, put about halfway in. I let the excess run off. And then I just go to the top start painting it on with the grain. Of course, one of the things is you'll end up getting this on the edge, which obviously you want to do the edges. So I'm basically just doing a line at a time, kind of painting it on first, and then coming back and just doing a single streak to make sure that gets all evened out. I'm also doing the edges, and you'll see as I do the edges, that leaves an excess of material popping up which of course we need to smooth out. You'll smooth it out when you redo the top, but you just wanna put this on relatively thinly and you wanna make sure there's no excess buildup because if you have excess buildup, that will harden into hard edges. I don't carry too much excess in the brush. Now that I've got my material applied everywhere, I come down all in one single direction. Not really applying too much pressure because I don't want the I don't want the finish to overlap onto the side edges any more than I want them to overlap on the top. Now that I've got it all wet, kind of move around and use the light. See if I've got any dry spots. I can kind of see one. So we're gonna use just a little bit fill that in. Now remember, since you'll be sanding between these coats, if you put it on a little thick, this is one of the areas you'll have an opportunity to correct for later in the process. This is starting to actually kind of get tacky now. This time I'm going to start by doing the edges themselves. Now I've got my edges. This part, um, as far as applying this stuff, it's probably the easiest part of this entire process. I mean, you're basically just trying to get it wet. I'm checking now to make sure there are no dry spots on the top. I see a couple. Not really pushing on the brush, letting the weight of the brush do most of the work are smoothing this out and this is already getting nice and tacky. Now any marks that get left because of my brush that'll part of be be part of what gets sanded out. So that's it for the first coat. So I drop my brush in the water there, bring my polyacrylic back 
Give it a couple taps to seal that lid back tight. And now we wait for it to dry. I wanted to do a little close up of this as you see it starting to dry. You can very clearly see the brush marks that are in there from the foam brush, but don't worry about it because as we continue to apply coats, those will get filled in. We fill them up, build it up, sand it down to smooth it. Then we continue to build it up and then sand it down to smooth it. So this isn't a problem at all. In fact, actually because of the sanding, this in my opinion, uh, at this point, since we're not going for like a mirror finish, is probably you have the most latitude to screw up now. Because if you wanted, you could apply 20 coats of this stuff to the wood uh, to get the finish you desire. Here we are, we're back after about an hour and our first coat is pretty much dry. So I did let these sit for an hour. Now I'm working in my basement, which has a dehumidifier. The average uh, humidity down here is about 40%. So this stuff will dry pretty quickly uh, as we're working. Of course, if you were in your garage or somewhere with more humidity, uh, this could take longer. We talked about the brush marks. So let's see if I can get that light in there. You can clearly see we've got all kinds of brush marks in the finish. But that's okay, because for this next part, we're gonna take our sanding block with some 220 grit sandpaper. And this time I'm gonna work with the grain. And I'm just gonna take this, I'm not even really pushing. I'm letting the weight of the sanding block do the work. Now, the goal of this is not to take the entire finish off. Again, it's just like with the wood. All we're doing is trying to smooth it. As it turns out, this first pass, since this was mostly about filling in valleys, you're gonna find that we probably did take quite a bit of the finish off, but that's not gonna be a problem. Again, we're not getting into the wood, just eating into that new finish we put on here. And as you can see, there's a nice coat of white. I guess I should have shown you this before I blew it off. Notice it's just white coming off. We don't have any blue material. And to uh, get the dust off, I've got just a slightly dampened paper towel. No blue. Just wiping all of that powder off that was the finish. This feels still pretty rough. And I'm not really gonna, I'm not really gonna get in on it too heavy with the sanding until I've gotten my second coat on there. You can see that's kind of rough. But you can definitely see, as a good example, I don't know, this section right here pretty much took all the new finish off. You can see where it stayed, some areas like here, and where it's come off in others. Now we're gonna basically fill those gaps in with our next coat. This is the brush I have for um, doing this that I said I wasn't gonna use. And I think I might actually try this on the last coat. So in the last coat, we really don't wanna sand it too much. You'll also notice I haven't done the edges. I'm gonna pretty much do those at the end. Just stirring it, get our brush in. Eyeballing to make sure there are no dry spots. Hitting the edges again lightly to make sure that I've cleaned up any excess material that may have gotten on there from the second coat. You'll see I brought those edges up again too. The only thing I haven't really quite figured out how to do perfectly yet is keep from bringing those edges up. All right, round two is complete. Double check, make sure I see no dry spots. To keep finish bubbles from forming along the bottom edge that we're not finishing, I just hit it with a quick paper towel just to make sure. All right, now we let that sit. All right, we're back after about another hour of letting these sit to dry. And this time, let's see if I can show this. This time, you'll notice that's a much smoother finish that's on there. The finish is just filling in what we sanded down last time. And you'll notice, see fewer brush strokes, although they are still visible. I'm gonna hit these with sanding blocks, except this time, since I didn't, didn't do it last time, we are gonna hit the edges. So 
So now, like last time, sanding with the grain, letting just the weight of the sanding block do the work. I'm not applying any additional pressure. You'll notice this time it's not getting as white, not as much material is coming off, because we are only now sanding into the finish we've applied. Just up and down with the grain, a little bit of overlap. Now, we'll take our slightly damp rag, wipe the material off. Again, you can see that we got down in some places. You can definitely see what I took off. But by and large, this still has a pretty smooth feel overall. Now doing the same thing over here and around the edges. All right, now it's time to apply our third and hopefully final coat. Wipe this down with my hands just to make sure it's free of debris. Because anything you leave in here will get trapped in the finish. This time we're going to use our fancy brush. Straight edged, pretty fine bristles. I will say working with this brush is actually a little bit more difficult than the foam pads because this brush doesn't really give as much because it's a brand new brush. I got to make sure that the edges are nice and smooth. Get down. Oh, I see some dry spots here on the edge. You'll notice I'm modifying my te technique as I go along and honestly, I don't have any guidance as to whether or not this back and forth is good or bad. Um, this is just seems what makes sense to me. As far as smoothing it out, obviously one direction seems to be better. Get around the edges to make sure I've collected the excess. Double check for dry spots. Uh, oh, I do see one. As we're letting this dry, I am going to make one concession. This might end up needing a fourth coat because of my inexperience with the brush. Um, again, I'm not an expert at this. I'm just doing my best guesses based on the information I've been given. Overall, it looks like it actually went on quite a bit heavier with the brush versus the foam brush, but we're going to let it dry and see what happens. All right, here we are, another hour of drying. This time, you'll see where we have a nice, smooth finish, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm done because you'll notice right here, I have some areas that didn't quite get filled in. And then honestly, I don't know if I'll be able to show this on camera. There are little, little bubbles that formed. So I'm going to hit this with the sandpaper one more time. If you'll remember, on the second board, I went back and forth with my brush strokes. And the second board definitely had more bubbles. So I'm not doing that this time. Now we inspect for dry spots as usual. Looks good. Now we'll let this, our fourth coat, dry. I really am learning a lot between coats. So here we are after our fourth and final coat of the finish on the wood. Now, you can see that brush strokes aren't really visible. 
that the overall surface is smooth, or smooth enough for my purposes. Now, I probably could go one more coat because there are some imperfections. I don't know if I can get that to show up on camera. But you can see where the, the, uh, the final finish was kind of sunk into the wood. And then there are a few spots on here where some of the imperfections of the wood still show up as low areas. But overall, for the level of shine I want on this, I'm pretty happy. Now, a couple of things to note. <clears throat> If this had some surface imperfections on it, like it did after the third coat where there were some bubbles, I would probably try to knock that down with some triple lot or quadruple lot steel wool. Now, the water-based urethane specifically tells you not to use steel wool, and that's because if any of that particulate gets trapped in here with the moisture, it would basically just rust into the wood. But if it's your final coat and you're trying to knock some stuff down, it's probably fine. Also, I've had no problem removing any dust that that's created in previous projects, but your mileage may vary. So I hope um, we both learned quite a bit. I know I have. And again, this video was not meant to be the end-all be-all of instruction videos so much as I'm just a guy working in his basement trying to learn this stuff as I go along. Some notes I will make. I need to go back and clean up these edges. I will probably hit that with some sandpaper by hand and apply another um, another coat or two of the urethane. But I'm not gonna do that on camera. I'm just pointing out that I'm not really happy with the way the edges came out. The other thing that I, uh, looking back, I really wish I would have paid more attention to are some of these imperfections where I didn't quite get the stain moved around fast enough and so we've got some splotchiness. This is totally would have been preventable if I had worked a little faster, put the stain on a little thicker and um, but again, that's a lesson learned. Next time uh, that I do this, that I, I expect it to turn out even better. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've learned some things um, and also learned some things not to do uh, by watching me finish this wood. After the second coat, I only waited about an hour before sanding and applying the third coat. I probably should have waited two hours. The instructions on the can actually do say two hours. Uh, so again, another lesson learned. This fourth coat actually has dried overnight, um, and I'm quite pleased with the way it's turned out. Overall, I have several lessons learned from this project, the first of which is slow down and take your time. Uh, going fast could possibly cause you to create errors or ruin any step of the process. Uh, of course, that's something we always get told, but hopefully you've seen, uh, <laughs> you've learned that from watching this. Second of all, I've learned don't power sand after you've stained. Uh, that removes a lot more material than I was giving it credit for. Uh, and that caused me to have to do a couple of extra coats of, of staining and having to do that introduced a few errors in the finish that I wish I didn't have to do. Um, speaking of the stain, definitely do more than one coat to really get the richness of the color. And when applying the stain, don't treat it like paint where we're trying to put it on thin. Apply liberally and then quickly work to wipe it off. And when we're wiping it off, make sure that we are wiping things off completely and that you don't start the rag and stop the rag um, throughout. That's what led to some of the splotchiness. So continuous strokes to remove the material as quickly as possible, especially when working with water-based uh, products, which will dry more quickly. Um, I also learned that I prefer foam brushes over bristled brushes. I got a much better outcome with them than I was expecting. Uh, that's my personal preference. There are a lot of people who will still prefer bristle bar brushes. And then finally, and this is something that's just going to take practice, I needed to do a better job of paying attention to the work I'm doing um, on the workpiece so as not to ruin the edges. On the piece that I did uh, for this project, there's excess stain and a lot of splotchiness along the edges. Um, the clear urethane finish didn't go on evenly. I need to figure out how to pay more attention and really give the edges the same attention and treatment as I did on the top. Please, as always, hit the like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions or even pointers, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below. I always like feedback, especially as I'm learning. Um, if there's anything you see that I could have done better, don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks for watching.